Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the cockpit of the DCS F-18 Charlie. Here we are chasing down a KC-135 with Mippers over the Marianas map. And if you hadn't guessed by now, we're going to be doing some night air-to-air -air refueling. Now I cheat, I could find them on the radar, but you know what, the uh, theatre map view just helps a little bit. He should be in the 12 o'clock. And there we go, we've just got him to the top of the HUD glass, a small speck in the night sky. So at this stage I'm going to maintain padlocked on him because it's easy to lose visual. I'll just cross-check my HUD for parameters, remembering he's at 15,000. So at this stage I would call visual, nose cold, switches safe. And that'd be the call to say my radar's off and my weapons are in the safe position, but of course I haven't done either of those things. You can see the radar scanning lower right on the MFD. Now you note you can't see any lights on the tanker until this point, which is unrealistic. On MVGs, you can see the lights from probably 50, 60 miles away, if not more. Of course, weather dependent. But other than that, what you're seeing through this MVG tube, the slight uh, textured fuzziness, uh, also known as kind of scintillation, is very authentic indeed. So if you haven't seen my previous air refueling daytime mission with the AV-8B, be sure to check that out in terms of where you're positioning the aircraft, but I'm just coming up on the uh, observation left of being the boom operator uh, position. Got a couple of options here. You can fly without MBGs if the tanker is better illuminated, and usually they are, but here it's only got a wingtip light and a tail light, which isn't quite good enough. So I'll stay on MBGs for now. You'll see my lights, I can switch my external lights off. I've assigned that to a keybind because that's the only way to switch off the probe light once it's out. But it's pretty dangerous to switch all your lights off behind a tanker because you're usually not the only person there. Look at that, the weather looks fantastic. Okay, putting the probe out. The probe is out, that light is on. And remember that light won't switch off unless you switch off all external lights. The other thing you can normally do with tankers is just request they switch certain lights on or off as long as they're not essential for operations and they can also uh, dim them or make them brighter if you wish. So now I'm in uh, pre-contact. Ready, pre-contact. Clear contact. Okay, a couple of options that we've got here as the basket extends. You can switch off the MBGs. You can see it's nicely illuminated on the basket itself by the probe lights. The other thing you can do is switch the MBGs on and switch your exterior lights off. So you can still see the basket, but it's not in of itself illuminated. So I go for this method here because it stands out nicely and it's really authentic to see the wingtip light, the basket and not a lot else. To stabilize driving it in, it's so much easier with the F-18 when you can see when you can see the basket and the probe in front of you. In the case of staying steady here, you'd normally look at the uh, MIPA for the lights because that'll tell you if you get too close or too far. And then you can sit here and play uh, crosswords with the tanker or uh, negotiate for your departure clearance. Here's the only footage I managed to get from outside because it's all live flying, it's not a track replay and it still unsteadies me somewhat. Here's an example of what happens when you're not stable, in fact when you don't keep the momentum into the basket. So I stop and then I start getting twitchy and I mean look at the lighting on the basket, that's fantastic as well. So it becomes unstable, so you must keep that momentum into the basket. Be in trim, keep it uh, solid in your HUD and then drive it forwards to contact. That's my F-16 Playmate Airborne. So back to the original video then. 
So you just sit here tanking away until you're complete. In this case, he disconnects me. Which is not authentic either, because you'd still stay in contact and you would ease back to disconnect from the basket. So the probe's gone in, so the light then goes out. I switch back to MBGs, check to the right to make sure there's no one else there, and then drift across to reform right. Such a cool sight to be behind such a big aeroplane at night. Okay, driving it forward, you then complete any uh, post refueling checks. Get your departure clearance, which again is normally up and away, but uh, I go up and towards because the island is actually in this direction. But look at that weather and the tanker. That's very, very realistic. That's it, time to light the carrots and uh, go back home. So I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to night air refueling. It's such a great sport to have a go at. It can be mighty frustrating, especially when you're first starting out. So remember, be in trim, be stable behind the basket, then have confidence to drive forward onto the basket and keep pushing that hose in until you're nice and stable. Eagle Dynamics, if you're watching, I would really, really love it if you did a deep dive add-on into air-to-air -air refueling to make it as authentic an experience as you do for your super carrier mod, because that's also amazing. Uh, but here I'm climbing, or should I say descending back through the cloud to recover to uh, the Marianas Islands. Uh, I don't take it to landing because my system turns into a potato. I think I'm get asking it to do too much again. So I hope that's been interesting, useful and enjoyable. And I hope you'll join me for the next video. So if you haven't, please subscribe, chuck in a like and feel free to comment with any questions you might have.